Yes, you did indeed read the title and thumbnail correctly. Today, I will be running the Disney Channel original movie Gauntlet by reviewing every Disney Channel original movie from my era. Now, for starters, you may wonder how I chose my era, and it was pretty simple. I'm 23, and I basically just looked up every Disney Channel original movie in release order. And whenever I got to a year where I didn't remember watching at least two to three of the movies when they first premiered, I was going to start off in the following year. So unfortunately, going to the mat and Tiger Cruise are the reason why I won't be starting in 2004. Now, as far as choosing my endpoint, that was much easier because in 2013, all we got was Teen Beach Movie. And I remember at the time, I didn't tune into the premiere on purpose because I just didn't care anymore. So 2012 is the cutoff because I still have no interest in seeing it. Also, I think it's important for me to point out that as I'm talking about these movies, keep in mind that I scale movies differently. And what I mean by that is I don't judge Starstruck on the same scale that I judge Interstellar. Of course, that might sound like common sense to most of you, but the internet is the internet, so I just wanted to throw that out there because the chronically online film purists start shivering in their timbers whenever I give something like High School Musical high praise. Also, since this video is going to cover so many movies, some way better and more complex than others, the amount of time I'm going to be talking about each movie is going to vary drastically. Now, I've intro long enough and I can only imagine how long this video turned out to be, so let's dive right into it. Oh, and yeah, also, spoiler alert, and whenever I say DCOM, I'm saying Disney Channel original movie because I am not about to say Disney Channel original movie every time I talk about a Disney Channel original movie. We good? Got it? Good. Make sure you grab your popcorn, some snacks, maybe, you know, a little Chipotle if you fancy that and buckle up. So starting off at the top of 2005, we got Now You See It. Now, this movie was interesting at the time because the whole vibe of the movie had a very ominous tone to it which was interesting for a movie exclusive to a kid's network and actually made it seem more scary than it really was. Now this movie followed a group of young magicians competing in a competition to see who the best was, but the main protagonist Danny Sinclair turned out to be an actual wizard. Now come to find out the guy who ran the competition has secretly been waiting for an actual wizard to come along so he can steal their power for himself, but it is a Disney movie so of course he doesn't succeed. This movie also had a lot of it shot in handheld style from the perspective of this girl Allison Miller, which was pretty unique and helped make this movie stand out from its peers. Now personally, I loved this movie growing up and still love it now. The plot itself doesn't even feel like a cookie cutter kids movie. It feels like a legitimate plot that could be used in an actual movie. DCOMs are pretty good at making the lessons of their movies pretty clear, but this is one where yes there's a lesson, but it feels like it came about through the plot developing and is not the main focal point. So all in all this movie was great. It aged pretty well in my opinion and it has Ali Machonka in it so yeah, hats off all around. Next up we have Buffalo Dreams and yeah, this is one of the movies where I don't have much to say. Let me be clear though, I don't think this movie is bad, I just think it's boring. And I say that as someone who likes slow burns. I mean I watch anime and half of that genre contains slow burns. But I guess if you're into westerns this movie isn't too terrible but everything about it just feels mediocre to me. The acting, the plot, the execution, the lesson, all of it. The one cool thing I'll say though is this movie did introduce me to the song Lean On Me, so there is that. And I guess if you like this movie, cool for you. Me personally, I was just kind of mad about it. On to the next, we have the first animated DCOM, Kim Possible, So The Drama. Now this movie to me is criminally underrated and deserves way more love than it's gotten. Kim Possible always seemed to me like it was in the limbo in between the legendary Disney Channel stuff and the ones that were just okay. I mean, I love Kim Possible growing up and I still see some people bring it up on social media every now and again, but it never seems to get the love like A Sweet Life or A Wizards of Waverly Place. In my opinion, I think it's just simply because it's animated. Now that's not to say animated Disney Channel stuff wasn't good, because it was. I mean, I'm still waiting for them to add Brandy and Mr. Whiskers to Disney Plus, but at the time and even still, Cartoon Network was king of, well, animation. So even when Disney put out their animated stuff, it just always felt like it got stepped on by other kids' networks. And don't even get me started on Nickelodeon. SpongeBob, Fairly Odd Parents, Jimmy Neutron, and I could keep going. It's a shame though because this movie is dope and has great fight sequences that were good, plus this movie was the official start of the Ron and Kim relationship which was a W for all the medium ugly guys out there like myself. Unfortunately though at the time nobody was checking for Disney animated stuff like that so this movie has kinda gotten lost in time. Next on our list we have Go Figure, the generic double life kids movie. So this movie was one of those that I completely forgot about and as soon as I turned it on I realized why I forgot about it. I even almost confused this movie with Ice Princess which apparently isn't a DCOM but is a solid movie in my opinion but you know we're not talking about that. In this movie a girl is trying to balance being a hockey player and a ballerina and this is to me the first movie in the gauntlet that just hasn't aged well with time. Now yes if I look at it in the vacuum that was 2005 then sure I can say the plot is relevant. 
but part of what makes a movie good is how they can stand through time. And some might say I shouldn't be that trivial when I'm talking about a kid's movie, but 13th Year came out before this, Luck of the Irish did as well, The Color of Friendship, and a few more. And all of those movies have aged much better than this one, and they all are DCOMs. But I understand not every movie has to be timeless to be good, some can be good and still be stuck in whatever year it came out in, but this ain't that. Alright, what's next? Uh, Life is Rough. Um, This DCOM is actually good. Really good. This movie is essentially about a kid learning to become a better person and friend through having a dog. Kind of hard to mess that up, right? I think part of what makes this movie great is that any bad or devious kid can kind of identify with Calvin, the main character, or at least to some degree. It also does the rare thing in kids media where it teaches the lesson of growing up and being a genuine person while not having it come across super cheesy. I almost forgot how good this movie was. Yeah, I like this one a lot. Oh man, they're gonna take my black card away for this one. The Proud Family movie is terrible, and I will stand on that forever. Now don't get it twisted, The Proud Family show is dope. I even like the reboot. This movie though, it's unironically a spectacle. We all know that one dance battle scene, right? Right. That was cool, right? Right. Other than that, what else was cool about this movie? The whole thing was unsettling as fuck, but I know that wasn't the intention. The dance battle is the meme that it is now because it was more of a what the f moment, why are they dance battling, rather than a wow a dance battle that's cool. I really don't like this movie bro and to sum it up perfectly, this entire movie just feels like an anime filler arc, and not a good one. So now we end 2005 off with Twitches, which was much needed for Disney to redeem themselves. I love Twitches and wish we would have gotten a trilogy, but the two we do have are very good movies. You know how some Disney Channel movies have that vibe where it almost feels like you're not watching a DCOM? This movie right here is one of them. It does get cheesy at times though, I'll admit, but that's the point and I think that's kind of essentially the charm of the movie because you could tell they're not taking it super serious and they're having fun with it in some instances. Plus Tia and Tamara are giving great performances as well so that helps. The only downside is there are the only ones giving great performances so when it jumps to a scene where neither are present, it just feels like you're watching a lifetime show with a CW budget. Alrighty now, we're heading into 2006 and they started this year off with a spicy one, High School Musical. Now it's pretty easy to say the High School Musical franchise is the biggest thing to come out of DCOMs, but how good exactly was the first movie? It was pretty solid. Now I know I'm walking on eggshells talking about a movie that is this massive but also cult like in a way, so let me say first, I really wasn't into the High School Musical series. I get why it's popular for sure and I bet it inspired hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of kids to look into trying out for theater and for that alone I have to give credit because this movie's impact was instant and we are still feeling the shockwaves to this day. I have no issues with this movie though I genuinely think it's a solid decom even with me not being into musicals. The one thing I will address though is over time people have been saying that Sharpay was misunderstood and misclassified as a mean girl and as someone who just got fresh off watching it, she is very much a mean girl in this movie. Did she develop? Absolutely. But in this movie, she was a sensitive bully, so I guess I can see where people's sympathies come from. Alright, next we have Cowbells, and boy was this movie a pleasant surprise. Now back in the day, I was kind of whatever about this movie, it was just always one where I felt like it just wasn't for me. But now that I'm older and I've learned to look at things outside of my own view and perspective, this is probably my biggest sleeper pick so far, and probably of the entire video. This might actually be the first DCOM that didn't rush and make the rich kids in the movie unlikable with no redeeming qualities. The girls in this movie actually have layers to them and just aren't the stereotypical I want daddy to buy me everything and you're a loser if you're poor mentality. Now I think Taylor, played by Allie, was much more complex but she was the older sister so it was kind of set up to be that way. From the very start, they showed you that she actually has a solid moral compass, but it takes for the plot to develop for it to slowly unravel and be at the forefront. The only real complaint about this movie is how they had a scene where people were actually willing to work while the boss wasn't paying them. Can you imagine that in today's climate? Boy, I would've been in my car speeding out that parking lot so fast. But yes, this movie is great, and even if you're not a rich kid who needs to watch this movie to learn the value of money, I still think there's a good story being told that's worth the sit down. I need to know what they were cooking in 2006. They were blessing us with banger after banger because next on the list is Wendy Wu Homecoming Warrior. Now we all know this movie is goaded, right? It's the closest thing we had to a kung fu decom and they delivered. Not only was the action great, but the casting was as well. You could tell this was a movie that was important to some of the performers and you could see a lot of them really giving an effort to give a great performance. Not only that, but up to this point we knew Brenda's song as London Tipton and this showed that she can have range and actually be the main character in something. I don't even need to say anything, I could just show clips of fighting in this movie and be done with it. This movie is phenomenal, Disney gave us a classic martial arts film for kids, 
I don't care how old you are. If you haven't seen this movie yet, you are seriously missing out. It's a fun time. What goes up must come down, and after giving us three straight heaters, Disney followed it up with Read It and Weep. Now, for starters, I'll say I like the concept of this movie. High school girl writes a book where she embellishes on her high school life, accidentally sends it out and it blows up and after the fame is set again, she slips up and makes it known that it was indeed based on her real high school. Could this make for a cool decom? Yes, but sadly they played it way too safe, even for decom standards, and the ball was dropped. For what it's worth, I like the moment where she does slip up and I thought they shot that really well with the music dropping in and everything, but other than that, this movie left me feeling really disappointed. But shout out to Jason Dill for no reason. I just felt like shouting somebody out. Um, Cheetah Girls 2 was cool. That's all I got. I'm not trying to be funny either. I truly don't know how to review this movie. A problem or event happens, they sing, rinse and repeat. This movie out of the three does have the best collection of songs and choreography to me as well. I'm not sure what the consensus is on which one is the best of the trilogy though. I'm a little outside my... uh realm of comfortability i guess just to say with this movie i don't even think that's the right term for it but i guess that's what i'm just gonna go with and we end the year off of 2006 with a divisive one return to halloween town now let's address the elephant in the room or the actress in the room i should say kimberly brown the original marnie was now replaced with sarah paxton and halloween town was a pretty popular franchise so i remember people being really confused on this now since its release, info has come out and basically on Kimberly's side, she says she had more than enough time to shoot the movie but they never contacted her. The creator of Halloween Town came out a few years later stating that what happened was nothing more than a contract dispute between Kimberly and Disney, which implies that Disney wasn't about to halt the production of the movie for one actor even if it is the main character. Now who I believe is irrelevant and who you believe is up to you, but let's be real you guys. This movie was submitted. Not even because the original Marnie wasn't involved, just the story itself felt too bloated for one movie, let alone the finale in the franchise. It seemed like we were just starting to really expand on the lore of Halloween Town universe, and the final shot itself leads you to believe that the story wasn't done being told. But sadly, this is what we were sent off with. Now, I think Sarah Paxson did fine, all things considered, and she definitely did feel like Marnie to me in her own way. It just sucks to have a stapled franchise for a popular American holiday get wasted like this. Throughout this video, I haven't once brought up rebooting any of these series or movies, but Halloween Town is the one that I would be totally down for. But I'd much rather Disney sell the IP to Netflix or someone else so they can be really dark and ominous with it. Marnie opening up the gateway between Halloween Town and Earth was this universe's Thanos snap and they did absolutely nothing with it and brought it up like it was a passing thought. Also. How the hell was she not aware of regular kids going to which university when she was researching it and apply for it? Whatever man, I'm over it. On to 2007. So they decided to start off 2007 with Jump In, a hood classic. Yo go figure, this is how you do a double life story the right way. I think the thing I like most about this movie is how nobody in the movie was perfect. Every single person had flaws and those flaws bled into other person's flaws which caused a lot of the conflict in this movie. It also dealt with a lot of real life issues prevalent today like the kid mad at the world because of the hand he's been dealt with in life as portrayed by Rodney. And then you have the kid who has everything going for himself but realizes he actually is living his parents dreams and not his own and that's being portrayed by Izzy. It helped carry the point that there's not necessarily a villain in this movie and the physical because the villain is everybody's inner conflict. It also had the overarching lesson of being true to yourself even though people might make fun of you for it. And the fact that both Izzy and Rodney are boxers can be looked at in a metaphorical way too, which I want to believe is intentional because they shot this movie like a movie, not a kid's program. So overall, this movie is great and handles the issues it presents better than most other kids' media. I have nothing but good things to say about this one. Johnny Capahala Bach on board, I don't know why I said it like that, but whatever, is one of the DCOMs of all time. Just, just one of them. In all honesty though, this is a good, mediocre movie. Nothing you'll ever want to watch again, but when you first see it, you don't feel like you wasted your time, but you also don't feel like you enjoyed your time either. No bullshit, I've actually been sitting at my computer screen for 10 minutes trying to figure out what else to say, but I got nothing. On to the next. High School Musical 2 is the best in the trilogy. Everybody knows it. The songs, the plot, bet on it by itself, dog walks the first movie. We actually started to see some character development from these characters and it was done well. Plus your line if you say you didn't watch this movie as a kid and didn't want to work at a country club with your friends for the summer when you got older. Plus the actors actually noticeably improved in just a year which allowed for a better watch. Also let me reiterate that Sharpay is indeed the real villain. Twitches 2 was more of the first one with a better plot and a bigger budget and I was all for it. Seriously though, this movie always looks so much better than the other DCOMs around this time and I still don't know why. Anyways though, this movie is extremely solid and the acting in this one seemed to have picked up the slack because the first one, T and Tamara were carrying hard. 
I mean, they still are, but this one isn't as noticeable. Also, the conclusion to this was good, which I'll give Disney Channel credit for because they usually know how to conclude franchises pretty well outside of, you know, the one that we brought up, you know, not too long ago that I don't even want to get back talking about because, yeah, whatever, on to the next one. On to 2008, and we have a personal favorite of mine, Minutemen. In this movie, we get our time travel decom. Now, since this movie, we've been getting a plethora of time travel movies, and with that, we've been introduced to different rules of time travel. As far as this movie's rules, I think they make sense enough to where you don't really question it, and they do follow their rules pretty strictly. They can only go back no more than a day, or else they'll be stuck there forever, and the more they use the machine, the more unstable it becomes, which does have a consequence because it gets unstable to the point where they're forced to go back to when it was first used in order to save the world. Now, early on, they do the typical thing most would do with time travel and try to rig their lottery, but it doesn't pay off because the adult they got to rig it for kept it for himself. So afterwards, they use it for good to help their fellow high schoolers, which would normally be pretty cheesy, but the intro to this movie establishes why that's the case and it makes sense. Also, the three main guys in this movie had a lot of charisma and bounced off each other pretty well, which I think made for a more enjoyable watch and it helped make jokes that typically wouldn't land actually end up being kind of funny. Like, there are a lot of legitimate funny moments in this movie. Even the running gag of them being called the snowsuit guys was amusing the whole way through. Great movie, great main characters, great plot. Can't ask for much more from a decom. Okay, so now we have Camp Rock, a movie that has probably bred as many stars as High School Musical, if not more, if we count the Jonas Brothers who were already kind of bubbling before this, I think. I'm not too sure on that. Maybe somebody can correct me on that. So this movie, I think, has become misunderstood as time has gone on as far as the plot goes. Nowadays, many people think Mitchie was getting hate in the movie because they found out she was poor, but it's really because she lied unprovoked for no reason. Yeah, the kids were appearing to be a bit snobby off the rip, but that's no excuse to make up a whole false facade just to appease them. And I get it, teens equals peer pressure and that's a thing, but the hoops people are jumping through to make it seem like she was unfairly shunned are crazy. Plus, did you see her bedroom? That girl was doing just fine. Other than all that though, the movie itself is okay. Like I said, I'm not a big musical person as far as like fantastical musical stuff, but this movie was okay. At least with Disney Channel musicals, a lot of the musical numbers sometimes make sense in the flow of the plot and aren't just always random spur to moment events. Though this movie has its highs, but boy are its lows in the pits of the earth. Next up, we have the conclusion to the Cheetah Girls franchise with One World, and to be honest, I liked it. This movie is the first one without the full group, and to be honest, I think they did a good job handling that. All three girls got time to shine a bit more with one less member to focus on, and because of that, it made the send-off satisfying, because we got to spend more time with them than usual. I wasn't the biggest fan of the music in this one, though, but there were one or two slaps I might add to my Disney playlist that I'm starting to curate as, as a result of watching all these movies. Once again, though, we have Disney Channel showcasing their ability to wrap up franchises pretty well. For the most part 2009 is next up and here we have a pretty forgettable movie in dad napped now that might sound harsh but to me this is one of those movies that feel like a fever dream the plot is pretty meh in concept it could have been fun but the execution wasn't there which sucks because the cast features a lot of disney kids that i like and i think they're 100 percent capable actors for this plot but for some reason this was just a case of looks good on paper but performs bad in person a guy writes famous comics takes his daughter on a dad-daughter bonding trip, but on the way they stop by a convention where he gets kidnapped by his fan base that's paying homage to one of his comics. But there's also two other guys that are really trying to kidnap him on top of his daughter who's also trying to keep up with them. It's just an overcomplicated mess that could have been done better if they just axed the real kidnapper's plot and just focused on the fans who kidnapped him and his daughter finally give it in and using his comics to help find them. We follow up this disaster with another personal favorite of mine, Hatch and Pete. Now this movie right here means something to me. Half the time the humor in this movie is so clever or out of left field that I forget this is a decom movie. The story itself isn't too crazy or special but the characters themselves carry this movie for me. I'm not sure why but this is one of those comfort movies for me for whenever I'm in like you know I just I want to watch something mood this is always something that's in my top five that I turn on. It just has a very homey feeling for me so I hold it in high regard but if I'm being objective this movie is just okay minus my nostalgia. Oh I just realized why I said shout out Jason Dill. He's in a lot of my personal favorites. We follow Hatch and Pete up with Princess Protection Program and this movie is definitely something. It was dope to see Selena Gomez and Demi Lovato playing roles they weren't usually cast in at the time and they did well all things considered. There's a good lesson in the story as well about self esteem too which was delivered in a pretty authentic way. I don't have many words for this movie because it's just really good. It has two of Disney's biggest stars at the time and the story itself has a timeless message in it. Can't ask for much more from a decom. 
The Wizards of Waverly Place movie is easily the best movie of an already established Disney show and it's not even close. This movie truly feels like it's just an extended special of the show with a bigger budget. The humor was still the same, the characters were still great, and the plot of this movie in my opinion elevated the perspective of this cast because it was actually pretty dark for a kids show. Which I guess when you break it down the whole family wizard showdown itself is pretty messed up when you think about it but in this movie they amplified the stakes of it which made for a much more engaging experience. I think I speak for all of us when I say the moment when Justin started to lose his memory when Alex won was probably one of the more unsettling moments in Disney Channel history probably. Making a typical Alex moment of her saying that she wishes her parents never met and turning it into a race against time where as time goes on things actually get more desperate as opposed to hopeful was really something to go back and see. We also got some really dope moments between the parents who are usually side characters but in this movie they really got time to shine and flesh out their characters a lot more. I love this movie, if you were a Disney kid you also love this movie and this is one of the few movies that can stand on its own. Without watching the show you might miss a few things but overall they did a great job making it its own thing while also helping it amplify the show. Hey, we in the 2010s now, and first on the docket is Starstruck, another solid as hell DCOM. Now this one I actually quite liked, even though everything about it didn't relate to me at all. It starred Daniel Campbell, who at the time I thought was gonna get a big push from Disney after this, but that never happened, and because of this, this movie really lacked that big Disney star and featured a lot of their B-list talent. Which isn't a diss by the way, I reserve the A-list for the Demi Lovatos and the Selena Gomez's or the seasoned vets like Jason Dill and whatnot. But even with that being said, this movie is still pretty good, the chemistry between the love interests is as believable as it can be, and the story does paint a picture we hadn't seen since Hannah Montana which is the humanizing of a famous person. Which in my opinion can easily be received poorly if done wrong but their approach to it was fine here where Sterling Knight is very much presented as a cliche pop star kid. But as the movie goes on, they start to show that below the surface, there actually is a normal kid down inside that just wants to be a regular teenager sometimes. Also, this movie does have quite a few slaps on it. Next, we have Den Brother, and I don't have much to say about it. I don't really like this movie. I think it's just not a good DCOM. The only redeeming thing about it for me was it featured that girl who was known to be a menace in most roles she played at the time. Plus, I really wasn't big on Hutch Dono. I think that's how you pronounce his name. His moose character on Sweet Life was mad to me, and on Zeke and Luther, he always felt like the weak link compared to the other characters. Still a pretty good show, though. Alright, now we have our major DCOM release of 2010 with Camp Rock 2, The Final Jam. And I must say, this movie is a beautiful mess. Something about this movie just encapsulated 2010's Disney for me, and I'm not even mad at it. Now, for a conclusion to the franchise, I'm okay with this. Demi Lovato's stock was rising at the time, and the Jonas Brothers were starting to get a bit old, and I'm always here for the main characters losing because I think that is an important message that can get lost sometimes in kids' media. The fact that you can't always win. I will say though, the music for me wasn't as good as I remember. The story itself though was pretty realistic, and I'll give Disney credit for making it abundantly clear how outclassed Camp Rock was from Camp Star. 99% of the time, if a rival summer camp with a way bigger budget opened up next to any other traditional summer camp, that traditional one is not making it out. But kudos for Disney for giving us the rare, it's about the friends we made along the way message behind a movie that is ultimately about a summer camp being shut down for good. Good movie, good way to send off, no complaints for me. Avalon High exists. There's your review. If someone could tell me what style this movie is shot in, please let me know because I've hated it my entire life and I can never find what it's called. And yes, this is an extremely personal opinion, but so? On a bright note though, this movie does star Britt Robertson who's in that one movie I like with Dylan O'Brien who's one of my favorite actors. It's called The Space Between Us. If you're watching a video like this, I think you'll like this movie a lot. But yeah, back to Avalon High, I could never really get into it and this marks the first decom on this list that I have still yet to finish. I actually dropped this movie 75% of the way there I think and I promise you I'm not losing any sleep over wondering how it ends. The year is 2011 and they decided to kick it off with the Sweet Life movie. Now I'm gonna keep it real with you guys. I grew up on the Sweet Life shows and this movie is pretty rough. Now I can't confirm this but I would like to believe this movie happened as a result of the Wizards of Waverly Place movie. Now this movie also had a pretty dark premise around it but in this case they took a very lighthearted approach to it and things never got taken serious. Which kind of fits the style of Sweet Life but the plot seemed like it was battling itself on when to take things super serious and when to crack jokes which just left both parts feeling half baked. Now were there some funny moments? Of course. Were there sections I liked? Sure. But for a movie spinoff off the damn Sweet Life series. The Sweet Life series. 
they had to come harder than they did honestly so funny enough we follow all of this up with in my opinion the best disney channel original movie of all time lemonade mouth this is one of those rare decoms that transcend just being a good decom and it becomes an actual viable movie not only do we get five different main characters with their own individual story arcs but those arcs bounce off each other seamlessly and allow for the overarching main plot to legitimately reach anyone for example do you have overbearing parents there's a story here for you do you often feel like you're the odd one out in your day-to-day -day life there's a story here for you did your parents divorce there's a story here for you do you have a not so nice relationship with your parents there's a story here for you do you have no clue what you want to do guess what there is also a story here for you there's just so many different threads to pull from with this movie to where it gives real replayability and they did as good a job as they can exploring every story in the time frame given the music is also a major plus so much so that i often wonder why the person in charge of this movie's music direction didn't just take over decom music direction after this the performances were also great the cast really bounced off each other well and knew how to deliver when things got serious and somber and trust me this movie has the somber moments I have nothing but good things to say about this movie. It has one of the strongest plots, complex characters, head rock and music, and strongest performances of any decom. I can count on both hands the amount of movies I've seen that I thought were flawless, and this is on one of those fingers. Sharpay's Fabulous Adventure is one of the more forgettable decoms I've seen. Not only that, but it kind of came out of nowhere. Even though if any Disney IP was going to get a spinoff, it would be High School Musical. I was never too big on Sharpay though, so I will admit this movie was for sure not geared towards me. I was a little confused about the story though. I mean, her whole high school musical arc was her learning to be a team player and more friendly in general, and this movie just seemed to hit the reset button on that whole thing, which was interesting to say the least. I mean, if you're a Sharpay fan, I can see you enjoying this movie for the fan service, but otherwise, this is just one of those decoms and nothing more. Phineas and Ferb Across the Second Dimension is a fun time. If you grew up watching Phineas and Ferb like I did, you just know how crazy this show was. So the fact that they were able to get even crazier by making a multiversal movie was just a sight to see and made for a fun as hell movie. Now of course after the success of the MCU and Miles Morales, the multiversal stuff is more of a commonplace at the time for most general audiences, but at the time this still was something that was pretty fresh to do and it really wasn't tiresome. I like how they even got weird with it more than they usually do with their animated stuff. Now, unlike other feature length films, this one doesn't really stand on its own too well, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it is a thing. But overall, it's an okay movie. I think the show is way better than what this movie is offering, but still, I'm down for a fun multiversal movie featuring a cast of characters that I love, you know, never going to complain about that. Next up, we have Geek Charmin, and this movie is probably the most divisive to talk about because of the plot of the movie and the unfortunate events that took place afterwards. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just look up the two stars' names together at your own discretion and you'll see. Also, let me be clear. I know this is far from the first movie I've come across where a star was doing heinous shit, but like I said, considering what the story is about and what ensued in real life, I just feel weird giving this any type of deep dive. So to give a very surface level opinion on the movie, it is good and definitely in the top half of movies in my era versus the bottom half. And that's all I got for you. Good Luck Charlie, It's Christmas is a really bad movie. And I love the show. Classic. Should have went triple. But this is a really bad movie. The best way I can describe it is like this. You know how most Disney shows have moments in the episode where things just aren't hitting or the episode in general wasn't up to par like the other ones? Yeah, that's like 85% of this movie to be honest. Also, they made it a Christmas special, which at this point you're almost setting yourself up for failure when you try to make Christmas special themed movies because you're just whether you like it or not you're just always going to be compared to the classics and you know you're just fighting a losing battle when you're doing that unless you come up with something good but i mean can you guys think of the last time you watched a new christmas movie that actually is in your rotation whenever holiday season comes around i i can't think of one not saying they don't exist but you know there are very few far in between all right we're in 2012 the final stretch and we're at the final fours starting off with frenemies a refreshingly unique decom in this movie we follow three different stories that are all taking place basically at the same time at the same high school we have the best friends who have their first real fight story the geek who's getting taken advantage of from the pretty girl story and then we have the kind of out of left field the girl who meets her doppelganger in a switch live story basically the parent trap now all these stories are pretty unique in their own way and could have definitely been their own decoms but because they split them in one movie it allowed for those slow moments in a plot to be non-existent so that each scene for each story was impactful and got right to the meat and potatoes. Also one thing I noticed too is that this movie probably has the most still actively acting cast. There's Zendaya who's you know Zendaya, 
Bella Thorne was pretty active still a few years ago. Mary Mauser is in Cobra Kai, a show I have zero interest in watching, but I still recognize its popularity. And Nick Robinson has still been out here doing his thing. I'm actually watching Made on Netflix at the time of writing this script, and he's probably the second biggest character in the show. Also, his acting has aged really well because I thought he was pretty brutal in front of me, but after watching The Teacher and currently watching Made, it's come a long way. I might even say that he's the best actor to come out of Disney in recent years, but I'm not trying to get death threats yet, so let me at least hit a thousand subscribers before I start ruffling some feathers. Anyways, this is a really good decom with a very relevant cast that for some of you guys going back and just watching these people early in their career might be worth the price of admission alone. Alright, next on the docket we have Radio Rebel, oh my god I'm already laughing. A movie that has become iconic for all the wrong reasons. Did I just say reasons? I'm getting delirious. <laughs> now this movie isn't necessarily good to me, but it is one of those bad movies that's bad in a way where it's actually fun. Not like Buffalo Dreams, where that was just like mediocre and boring. Which sounds like a backhanded compliment, which it is, but at least it's not, you know, the type of bad where it's like, oh, I can't wait to turn this off. Now the most enjoyable part about this movie is Debbie Ryan, who's giving the most Debbie Ryan performance you could ask for, seeing it in decom form, it, it is an incredible sight to see. Now the plot is whatever, it's actually pretty awful if I'm comparing it to the better decom plots, but that's not why you watch this movie. You watch it to see Debbie Ryan in her element, and boy is she Aang flying through the clouds in this movie. So it took long enough, but now we're back at it again with another hood classic, Let It Shine. Now if you grew up in a Christian household like myself, then this movie hit you a little differently because there were a lot of moments in here that'll take you back to your childhood. Not to mention, this was the first decom to really acknowledge rap in a way where the soundtrack was heavily hip hop influenced. I mean, bro, this movie gave us a street rap battle for a decom movie, and it wasn't even bad. Even the gospel songs they remixed were dope to the point where you could actually play them at an actual church and not get side eye for it. Also, in that first scene, bro, when they remixed Joyful Noise, that's how you knew it was about to be a classic. I just love this movie, man. As a black kid who grew up in a Christian household that also loved hip hop, this movie is just everything I could have asked for, and it still holds up. A couple of reviews ago, I talked about how the cast of Frenemies is still running around, but this cast isn't too far off. Tyler James Williams is one of the more popular shows out right now in a by Elementary. Coco Jones has been pretty active as well recently, and it looks like she isn't slowing down anytime soon. Also, the Bailey sisters are doing their thing. I mean, Haley is the Little Mermaid, which is an incredibly big deal for all the obvious reasons. Even Trevor Jackson is in his music back lately, but he also was in some stuff I liked after this movie like Burning Sands, a very underrated movie about frat life and black Greek culture. So if it isn't obvious, Let It Shine is on my personal Mount Rushmore of DCOMs, and I, and I can't help but be biased because everything surrounding it reminds me so much of how I grew up and what I grew up loving and still love to this day. So last and certainly close to least, we have Girl vs. Monster, a movie that I think started to entail what Disney Channel was slowly becoming. I don't know how to describe it, but this movie felt like the signal that a new era of Disney was being ushered in, and for some reason, it just made my heart sad watching this. It kind of felt like that first time when I had Wendy's after they stopped packaging everything in that yellow color, which might not make sense to some of you, but for those that know, you know exactly the feeling. Now I should say this movie is okay, I mean it's a Halloween special, so with those movies like that it gets pretty dated if you're not watching it around the time period, and I feel like the Halloween Town franchise was the only decom movies, well movies I guess just to say, in this era to successfully shake that stench off. I am surprised though that Olivia Holt isn't a bigger name after watching this. I feel like she was next in line of that Selena Gomez, Demi Lovato type that could break through and become a superstar out of Disney, especially after how well received that one show was on Disney XD kicking it. The action in this movie was pretty fun as well, I didn't expect this movie to go too wild with it but I guess I didn't really consider kicking it, but I guess I didn't really consider the kicking it background she had that most likely made those scenes way more comfortable for her. And that is it, we have officially run the gauntlet of my era of decoms and all I can say is I will never review this many movies in one sitting ever again. Now if you're still watching this at this point, number one, I love you. And number two, please consider dropping a like if you haven't done so already. I didn't ask for a like at all throughout this entire video, so the fact I'm asking at the end is actually not smart on my part, but you know, it is what it is. I don't even want to tell you how long this project took either because like, you know, that's, you know, yeah, we're not even going to discuss that. But I did take a long hiatus on YouTube, so I kind of wanted to come back with a bang, you know, shake the thing up a little bit. But I don't even know how this video is going to perform, obviously, because, you know, can't predict these things. Now, to my next video, peace and light, and remember to eat your veggies.